All right, we are back out here on the lake. I'm going to talk today about the rapture is not a bailout. <laughs> Isaiah 22, if you want to turn there in your Bible, King James Bible. Got to kind of, I'm trying to steer out of the waters are getting kind of choppy right now because of the storm coming here later today. But uh, Isaiah 22, verses 12 through 14, uh, trying to get into a calm spot over here. Isaiah 22, I'm getting turned sideways again. Excuse me here while I turn myself. I'm trying to keep the, the wake behind me. Isaiah 22, verse 12. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. That's what he does when a nation's wicked. He says, are you going to repent? Are you going to show some godly sorrow here? And behold... Joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. A lot of people in America have that mindset. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Hey, who cares, you know? Yeah, the economy might be falling. Yeah, there might be war on the horizon, but who cares? Let's, uh, let's, just, let's enjoy life. I'm here to enjoy life, man. You know, did you ever hear that? Verse 14, and it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts, surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. There's a lot of sin out there that will not be purged from people until they're dead. Plain and simple. Next, let's go. We're going to see a, a New Testament tie into this. 1 Corinthians 15. Go in your New Testament to 1 Corinthians 15. Get there here. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 31 through 34. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Paul referring back to the Old Testament, this philosophy that worldly people have. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Who cares? Verse 33. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. If you watch the other study, awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Um, you know, there's, there's a danger in the thing of the pre-trib rapture. We can call it that. Um, and that danger is that you think to yourself, well, I'm going to be leaving soon. The Lord's got to be coming back soon. So why bother cleaning anything up? Why bother? We'll be out of here soon anyways. I, I don't need to, you know, I don't need to worry about sin or righteousness or, or whatever. I'm going to be leaving. So who cares? It doesn't matter. You know, I'm going to get trapped here in this whole thing, this little marsh here. And be careful. But uh, that's the way a lot of people think. The rapture is kind of their bailout that they're looking for. I don't need to think about the economy, quote unquote, the spiritual economy. I'm getting a bailout coming soon. I'm in debt. I'm in physical uh, destruction because of sin, because of living a very, very wicked life for many, many years. But I don't care. It doesn't matter because the Lord's coming back and I'm going to get my bailout. I'm going to get my come up hither and, oh, good, I don't have to pay off those debts and I don't have to get rid of that sin and, I don't have to get my health back the way it should be. I'm, I'm going to be leaving soon, brethren, so we just don't have to worry about it. That's not right. That's not the right way to do it, brethren. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people believe that way, that believe the right thing. The, the quote-unquote pre-trib rapture is Bible doctrine. But uh, it's not right for you to just say, well, then I don't need to worry about sin or, or whatever else. Uh, you need to think about things and you need to get things cleaned out of your life. You don't just say, well, let's eat and drink for tomorrow we die. We're, we're going to be going home to be with the Lord soon. So forget the pornography addiction, forget the drinking, the, you know, the smoking, the cigarettes, the, you know, whatever, name it. Um, cause we're going to be leaving. Uh, that's a problem. And unfortunately a lot of people fall into that. And another thing people do with this whole pre-trib rapture thing, it's, which I'm against, not the pre-trib rapture, but what people do, they'll come up with this mindset of, hey, you know what? 
um, since we're not going to be here for the mark of the beast and I don't have to do anything to fight that system when I see the self checkout line at the grocery store or when I see them saying let's implement this RFID tag for this or for that or whatever else man, I'm not going to be here for the mark of the beast so I don't care I don't have to, to make myself look weird or whatever by saying no I don't want anything to do with that you know I remember being a, a young man years ago working at the Strasburg Railroad in the dining car restaurant it's been totally changed now so it's not the same thing but um, and there was an old man came up to the cash register and he bought a combination of food and drink and whatever else and it came out to six dollars and sixty six cents and I said I was at the cash register I said oh that'll be six dollars and sixty six cents sir and he said I'm not gonna pay you that and I just kinda said uh, uh, excuse me and he said uh, that's a very evil number in the Bible son and he said I'm gonna give you six dollars and sixty seven cents and you keep the change I'm not paying 666. And you know, I knew what it was about. I was raised in the whole church building thing, so I knew what he meant. But uh, that always stuck with me. A man had character. And um, we need to be the same way. Don't just say, well, the bailout's coming. You know, hey, I can live in sin. I can be wicked. Eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Because the Lord's going to catch us up soon. So I don't have to get victory over these sins. And I don't have to try to get out of debt and try to you know, get my health right and, and witness to people and stick my neck out for Jesus Christ because the bailout's coming. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to get caught up soon and our troubles will be over. Well, that stuff is great, but brethren, uh, that's not supposed to be your only motivation. Let's see if I can turn to the next spot here without getting capsized. <laughs> uh, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and not through 9. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Huh. Um, you say, well, that's for the lost. That's, that's just, you know, that he that... So to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. It's written to a Christian. It's written to a Christian. I mean, if that doesn't give you some pause to consider some things there, um, you might want to check yourself. Uh, you sow to the flesh, you will to the flesh reap corruption. I could go out and start drinking tonight. Just go out and start drinking alcohol. Just hard liquor and beer and wine and whatever I feel like drinking. Just as much as I want and whatever else. Um... You say, well, would you lose your salvation? No, but I'd lose a, a whole lot of other things. Why? So into the flesh. And to the flesh I'll reap corruption. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do as a Christian, and it won't make you lose your salvation, but it's going to destroy you. It's going to mess you up bad. Why would you want to do those things? Hmm? Well, because, Brother Brian, there's going to come that bailout time. My name's going to get called and... You know, come on down, you're, you're, you're going to be, or come on up, you know, you're going to be the next contestant on all your debts and all your sins and everything's taken care of. Well, praise the Lord when that comes. Nobody's going to be going up that's sinless, you know, understand that too. But uh, we're not supposed to have a whole lot of things that uh, are unconfessed sin. We're supposed to fight sin. Don't you want to fight sin? Be not deceived, God is not mocked. You're not going to mock him. It's not going to be some kind of a thing, well, I'm his special child, so therefore I don't have to worry about these things. I can, I can just, uh, I can kind of just live however I want to live, and, and I'm going to get that bailout, brother. Um, everything's going to be, it's going to just turn out just fine. I'm realizing I am not even going anywhere right now. <laughs> I'm just, you know, kind of staying in one spot. I guess it's better this way than just getting plowed into the, bank back here behind me but it's kind of like a lot of Christians in their life you know all you're doing is really just treading water you're not going anywhere you know what I mean just waiting for the rapture maybe today perhaps today well that's beautiful that's wonderful but uh, you ought to be doing something for the Lord you ought to be making some forward progress in your life of sanctification instead of just sitting here just Look over there at the bank. Hey, it's not moving. Huh. I guess I'm just sitting here. Just getting, you know, tossed about. 
I don't have much choice because I can only, you know, row with one hand here right now. But uh, next, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Don't want to get sideways. I will be in trouble. I have to take a break here for just a minute. And I got to get out of this area here. I'm going to get trouble here. Couldn't have picked a calm day to come out and do my sermon here. Had to pick a rough day. Yep. Always entertaining, you know? It's just, you never know what you're going to get next at King James Video Ministries. If I just had a million dollar church building, you know, I just, things would be so much better. I could probably get, you know, bigger offerings and whatever else and stuff like that, you know? Because that's what it's all about, brethren. Get those big offerings coming in, you know. So you can build a bigger building, so you can build a bigger, you know, get it your own school and, you know, your own stuff and whatever else. All right. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 9. Turn there. Hopefully you're there by now. Unless you're watching it in a kayak out on a lake and getting pushed into shore too. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. Getting pushed into the shore again. Um... And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hmm. You're in a race. Uh, Jesus Christ is your, you know, he's, look, we're going to see here in just a little bit about looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. But you're in a race, brethren. We're supposed to think about eternal things. We're not supposed to just say, well, whatever, doesn't matter. Eat and drink for tomorrow we die. We're going to be caught up. So, you know, there's our heavenly bailout coming. Praise the Lord, we won't be here much longer. You know, the way things are shaping up, we're going to be out of here. And I've said those statements, you know, sure, absolutely. You know, we're all excited to go to be with the Lord. Absolutely. But you know what? Uh, brethren, <laughs> If, if all you're doing is just sitting around waiting for the Lord to return and just, just oh, it's going to be so great when he comes back and, you know, the whole thing, and you're not moving, you're not running the race that's set before you, uh, that's a problem, okay? It's not supposed to be that way. You are supposed to be making some headway, all right? Um, I'm not near where we parked our vehicle, our truck. Uh, I'm pretty far away from it right now at this point in time. Um, well, I'll just quit. You know, I'll just kind of say, well, I'll just st stay here and I won't bother trying to paddle back or whatever. You know, no, I have to make some forward progress. I have to get out here and, and I have to exercise and, and whatever else. And this is good exercise too, by the way, if you've never done it. I need to think about those things. Probably just pull ashore or something someplace. But, uh, it's really getting choppy out here right now. I'm going to try to get this video done quick. See if I can do it here. Coasting along with the tide. <laughs> Next we're going to turn to... Got to turn here. Hebrews chapter 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 12. Yeah, come on. Water is trying to turn me here. The little waves are trying to turn me. It's kind of like life, you know? I try to stay straight and the 
course of the world is always trying to turn you off to the side. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Yeah, Jesus is it. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Okay, we're supposed to do that. Next we're going to go to... What do we have next here? 2 Timothy chapter 2. <laughs> We're turning around again. Around and around we go. I'll just go this way here. Let it kind of push me into the shore a little bit. Just constantly trying to turn me sideways so it can really rock the boat back and forth. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 5. Some of my favorite verses of Scripture. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, you know, kind of like the cloud of witnesses in Hebrews chapter 12, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he, is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. You know, again, brethren, we're heading for the judgment seat of Christ. It isn't just, you know, hey, the rapture bailout's going to come and, and we get to go home to be with the Lord and how glorious and how wonderful and everything else. And now we're, we're home with the Lord, absent from the body, present with, the, well, we'll have a glorified body then. And so then we don't have to worry about sin anymore. Um, well, there's some truth in that. Absolutely. But I'll tell you what. Uh, you need to think about a few things. Okay? I mean, do you really want to meet Jesus Christ with all kinds of sins that are unconfessed and everything? I don't think so. Um, you know, that's kind of a problem. But I guess some people just don't care about that. Finally, one more place to go to. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, with all, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing." And that's the, where we're going to end this. Um, the fact is, brethren, uh, we're going to meet Jesus Christ. And when you do, you don't want to be ashamed before him at his coming. We're running a race right now. There's no time for messing around with sin. You should want to get victory over those sins and say, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. This stuff has been negative. It's hurt me. I want to, I want to live righteously before my God. That's what you should do. That's the way it should be, brethren. So, um, I just pray that this has been a big challenge to you because I've seen this thing and, and we should fight the system of Antichrist. We should expose things. We're not going to see the Antichrist. So don't say, I think Emmanuel Macron is the Antichrist or Jared Kuchner or something like this or Donald Trump or that stuff's nonsense. Um, we're not going to see him. 
Okay, we'll be in heaven. The body of Christ there, the 24 elders and the and the uh, angels there around about the throne are there in, Ma in Revelation 5. Revelation 6 is when the Antichrist is unleashed. So we don't have to worry about seeing the Antichrist or the mark of the beast, but that doesn't mean we should help the system come in by being silent about it. Um, we shouldn't do that. So that is going to be it for this study. And uh, kind of a new thing here. I don't know if I'm going to be doing this much. <laughs> if I do it again, I'm going to pick a calmer day. It was fairly calm when we first started, but the winds are really starting to pick up, so it's getting really choppy out here. But, um, you know, again, I, I do this to, to show you that you can serve the Lord anywhere. But uh, it's a good thing to be out in nature. You can really, you know, it's a real great blessing to be at a place like this and to preach the Word and, and, and just to come out here and enjoy yourself. Come out here with your Bible. Come out to a wilderness area or a country area or even in, if you're in the city, go into a town park and carry your Bible with you and read it. You know? Um, great place to worship the Lord. Uh, so, and I do this also to just challenge you to, to get out of nature and just to even enjoy yourself. Um, but... Uh, we need a call to righteousness, as I said in the other study. And uh, don't think that of the, the catching up as just your bailout that's coming. Oh, the Lord's going to be catching us up soon, and then I won't have to worry about all the mistakes of my past and whatever else. It's not right, brethren. It's not right. Um, I could just go back to the junk food I used to eat and whatever else. And Why? Well, who cares? The Lord's coming. I'm not going to have to worry about this stuff. Um... No, I want to have victory over sin. As much victory over sin as I can have. So, that is going to be it. And we will see you in the next video, whenever that comes out. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Hatton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.